Hi, this is Mark Lindsay, and we're going to talk about the typical hardware for a client using VoIP. And really, this is also known as Customer Premise Equipment, or CPE. So in this model, we're going to talk about the case of a hosted PBX platform, where we really have a customer that has an Ethernet switch. Uh, they've got PCs, they've got SIP phones, they've got a Customer Edge router, the e router. They have an access link and they have a provider edge router connected to the VoIP service provider or also called the VoIP SP. So first let's talk about the phones. A couple of the popular options are the Polycom and Cisco, Bob 500 phones, and the Astro phones uh, such as the Astro 57i. So uh, let me show you a couple of pictures of you know the couple of the Polycom phones I have handy. Um, so this is a, a Polycom VVX 500. Um, it's a new phone, just came out in the last couple of months, and this is a uh, fairly modern SIP phone. This one's actually video capable. You can plug a camera right into it. If we look at the reverse side of it, uh, where I've got it plugged in, the gray cable with the labeling on it here is the uh, Ethernet cable. This is the uplink cable, and this one connects up to the Ethernet switch. Um, then this cable uh, as for a PC, what it has is built in, there's an Ethernet switch that connects these two ports together. And so this solves the problem where you've got a uh, single Ethernet cable running to your user's desk and you want to be able to provide uh, service for that new phone, that new SIP phone, and you also need to service anything else that was already on the desk. Well, the PC port is intended to be uh, uh, a replacement for that jack on the wall that you're now using for the SIP phone. And we'll talk about why you do it in this order but uh, the nicer phones are going to have a switch port on the back uh, for supporting that. Then there's the conventional handset um, jack here, and this just plugs into the curly cable down to the, to the handset. Uh, and then we've got the headset jack, which you could see in the previous uh, photo, which was basically my wireless Jabra um, headset that I use. I like this one because it's got a good, a good range of uh, close to a tenth of a mile. Then there's uh, another cable you notice here. This is actually the electronic hook switch control connected to the tell the headset when I'm on a call or off a call and vice versa. So you notice what we're, we don't have plugged in here is we don't have a power cable. And we'll talk about why. In effect, what we're using is some of the conductors on this Ethernet cable for what's called power over Ethernet. This is another Polycom phone. This is an older model. This is the Polycom Soundpoint IP 670. Uh, it has a nominally colored display. It's not. It's not exactly a brilliant display, as you can see. Um, and it is a. Uh, it's a nice, solid, heavy-duty phone. It's got a. In this particular case, this one has a sidecar, so I can monitor the lines and usage of my coworkers. Um, that's one thing worth pointing out, basically, is that this first button at the top here, that's my actual uh, line. Then the rest of these are what Broadworks calls busy lamp fields. They're also called line state monitoring. And each of these gives me a button where I can see the uh, status of um, some other person in my company. In Broadworks, these are other people within the same group. And it also gives me a speed dial so I can actually call directly to them. Uh, there's an enhanced version of this uh, busy land field function with Broadworks where if a call is coming in, uh, for example, Jeff Quinn is receiving a call, and I have been asked to monitor Jeff's line, then I can make that one blink uh, when he's getting a call, and then I can actually hit that button, uh, the Jeff button, to answer his call if I'm asked to uh, cover his phone. Um, but this is a, another phone. It's got the same kind of connections on the rear as the uh, VVX 500 that we saw before, but this Soundpoint IP 670 is an older model phone. So, uh, moving on from the phone itself, we'll talk about the Ethernet switch. Um, a popular uh, couple of models for Ethernet switches would be the Cisco Small Business line, such as the SG310P um, or the Adtran NetVanta. Uh, and, or, in a lot of cases, it's just whatever you already have. So a lot of customers are not going to replace their Ethernet switch when you put in uh, voice over IP service. And in many cases, that actually creates a very difficult situation for the VoIP service provider because the Ethernet switch they have may be um, underpowered in terms of management features and other, other kinds of functionality. Um, so let's talk about some key features that we really do look for in an Ethernet switch. So one of them is managed. Uh, we want to... Uh, be able to log into the switch and view settings uh, and statistics, uh, so stats, um, config settings, such as duplex mode, um, which is a really key setting to you know for proper functionality on a uh, full duplex Ethernet um, switch. 
So we need to be able to see those settings. We want to be able to look at whether there are errors on the link. Um, we also want to be able to enable and disable ports. Um, we want to be able to change the VLAN setting um, for a given port because the uh, voice traffic may be in a different VLAN than the uh, regular data traffic. So you might have your PCs in VLAN 1 where they've always been in the past, but you put your voice uh, devices in VLAN 2 and then you can keep them separated for, for certain purposes. It may be convenient. It's not usually a quality of service function. It's more along the lines of routing. We want to do something differently um, with those. We, for example, on our access link back to this voice service provider, we may route the, um, the phones over a separate uh, tunnel inside of the link, uh, and so they're kept in a secure zone, basically, between the customer premise and the you know, VoIP service provider, so that the VoIP service provider is not exposing their customers' devices directly to internet uh, equipment and, uh, and whatnot. Um, another key feature is power over Ethernet, and so as I mentioned before, this is a convenient way of providing power directly from the Ethernet switch down to the phone. It uh, Normally, in an Ethernet cable, we would have two pair in use, uh, typically actually carrying data, so basically one of them is carrying data in one direction, the other one's carrying data in the other direction. And with PoE, uh, we have another couple of lines that we use basically for uh, power. Um, I believe it's typically 48 volts uh, DC power. Um, and that's used for uh, providing power to things like SIP phones. It's also, you'll see, common on IP cameras so that you can put security cameras around without having to run separate power. This is also a really powerful function. Uh, no pun intended, because you can actually turn it on and off. So the ability to remotely log into this Ethernet switch and then control a phone by re by turning its power on and off is a is a really uh, is a really useful function. So another item on the network is the customer edge router. Um, and so we call this the CE router. It's often a firewall. It's typically a NAT device, uh, meaning that it rewrites between the private IP addresses such as 10.1.1.1 and public IP addresses to the internet. Sometimes, rarely, it's a SIP aware device such as the Edgewater Edgemark. Now this is a, a pretty uh, good device among the SIP aware um, category. It may be the only functional SIP aware um, customer edge router that's on the market today. So these are these are relatively rare, but the, the nice thing about the SIP aware device is they can solve some problems uh, for troubleshooting and network efficiency that are hard to do otherwise. But in almost every case, you end up with the firewall and NAT device uh, built into one. And so this router becomes the um, really a security barrier between the public internet and the customer's network. Um, Oh, one question is, well, does the VoIP service provider operate the CE router or not? You know, so if a customer already had a, a firewall with an Ethernet connection, you know, how would they go about uh, connecting? Would they have to replace that equipment or not? <clears throat> and it really varies uh, based on what the customer already has and the business model of the VoIP service provider. So let's talk about this customer edge router a little bit. What what are the goes ins and goes outs? So uh, almost in every case, the inside of this device is Ethernet. The, um, this is the, we could say that this is the private side. And this is the, on the left, the public side. So on the private side, we almost always have Ethernet. You know, what else are you going to have? Token ring, you know, who has that? Fitty. Uh, on the public side, it could be a lot of different things. So, for example, this access link, it could be, you know, Ethernet over copper. So, just basically a conventional Ethernet to the, um, to the customer's facility. It could be uh, some sort of fiber delivery. Uh, it could also be, very commonly, some sort of DSL service. Um, it could also be a TDM circuit, such as a TDM uh, T1 or E1. So let's look at some alternative models. So other than the hosted PBX model we saw before with the fancy expensive uh, SIP phone and the, uh, and the voice service provider providing those features, there's a very common uh, alternative model, which is where you have an IAD. IAD stands for Integrated Access Device and it's shown here in the middle. 
The, uh, what makes it integrated is that we have a single device that's able to do uh, both voice services and it's also providing the functions of a customer edge router. So really, in this particular case, our IAD is equal to basically what we call an analog terminal adapter, uh, which delivers ordinary POT service and connects POTS lines directly to, um, directly to a VoIP service, and then a customer edge router rolled into one. That's the that's the IAD in this particular case. The um, in this model we have uh, POTS lines which could be connected to ordinary phones or it may be connected to a legacy key system or PBX. Uh, and then we have an Ethernet link, just unlike in the case of our other uh, customer edge routers connected to the PCs internal to this network. Notice that the voice over IP in this particular network only exists basically on this uh, zone of the network from the IAD back to the VoIP service provider. So the customer in this particular model doesn't have any VoIP equipment uh, within his network. He might have his legacy PBX. For example, I have a client that has a legacy PBX. It's a uh, Nortel Meridian system. It has POTS interfaces. Um, they're called FXO interfaces in that device. That, that means that they connect to the office side. And so in this particular model, the IAD functions as a replacement for the central office, uh, which is where the, the phone service would, be, would have been provided um, in, uh, in the past eras. Um, and so they use that existing um, PBX and connect to an IAD. And that IAD also provides internet service um, to uh, connect the PCs within the network, and in that case, it's you know it's more or less ordinary internet service provider type functionality. Um, in almost every case, the IAD is actually going to be operated by the service provider. So this would be uh, this IAD would be service provider controlled. Another model worth looking at is the. Um, case where we don't have any SIP phones, but what we do have is ATAs. So, for example, imagine a retail store. Um, they have internet service because their credit card machines use them in their billing and their accounting and their, um, and their uh, inventory management system. They may use the internet, of course. Um, but, in, so, in this case, we do have regular PCs. But, uh, in addition to that, we have this ATA device. Um, which is able to um, function as a gateway between the POTS network on the uh, bottom and the uh, Ethernet voice network, the Ethernet um, data network on the top. And so in this particular example, our POTS line is just connected to a fax machine, and this would be a really classic case. You've got a fax machine, uh, the, the customer's in love with having a fax machine, they're never going to give up their fax machine as far as they know, and so they're, they may buy VoIP service in some other way, but they're going to have this ATA, so this ATA functions as the device um, to make that gateway connection. So this POTS line is, is just an ordinary two-wire POTS line. Um, <clears throat> in this case, it's technically very similar to a very small IAD, in the sense that it's um, providing on the um, upstream side, Basically, it's VoIP, and on uh, what you might call the downstream side, it's POTS. And that was the same that we saw before, where we had this IAD with um, VoIP on the upper side, and then POTS on the lower side. So another model worth looking at involves the IAD, but instead of providing... POT service, we've got a different model of IAD, and it's actually providing uh, an ISDN PRI uh, function. So this would be where the IAD has a TDM E1 or T1 interface, and it's connected down to a PBX. So instead of a PBX or key system that uses a uh, legacy uh, FXS type of interface to connect to the telephone network, this is a slightly more modern PBX that's using an uh, ISDN PRI. Um, this is a much better interface to uh, use between the IAD and the PBX. It's much uh, easier to troubleshoot. But again, in this case, the IAD is the only voice over IP device in this customer's network. The PBX itself is just the same old PBX they had before. And, you know, let's say, pretend prior to this uh, particular installation, we might have had uh, this PBX connected to uh, just another telephone provider where they had a Nortel DMS or a um, Lucent 5 VSS. Those would be conventional telephone switches that might be used by uh, the old school phone companies.